Cow nose rays are fun and cute. Hi, what's going on friends? My name is Brandon and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic animals with you through science, stories, and art. It's my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them. Please stick around to the very end to hear about this month's charity opportunity. Today we will be discovering the Atlantic waters of the Cow Nose Ray. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Rhinoptera bonassis are known as cow nose rays. They are related to the eagle ray, bat rays, and manta rays. Their scientific name is Greek for nose wing bison. They have a squared nose that looks like a cow's nose. They are cute and I love watching them. So where can we find these wonderful animals? They can be found in brackish and saltwater systems. Brackish water is like estuarine water, where it is a mix of fresh and salt water. They can be found in the Atlantic Ocean from New England to Brazil, along the coasts and near the Caribbean islands. They are a pelagic species, spending most of their time swimming in the water column. They are also oceanadromous, making large migrations throughout the year. Oceanadromous is a term referring to animals that spend their time in different habitats across oceans and open water. They are only found in depths up to 22 meters, or 72 feet. It is not known why they migrate, but it could be temperature and position of the sun. Cow nose rays gather and spend most of their time in large schools for migration. So how am I gonna paint this animal? I'm going to paint it from the side as if it is in shallow tropical water. I want it to look like it is cruising through crystal clear warm shallow water. I want some play with light and ripples on the water surface. I have been painting animals that are dark recently and I want to lighten it up. I use three steps to my paintings. I block in, model, and add details. Before I paint, I like toning my canvas with burnt umber. This makes it so that I can get better color mixing for my painting. If I use a white canvas, it makes the colors look too dark and it throws off the colors and adds too much contrast. During blocking in phase, I use loose strokes with large brushes. I get general shapes and midtones during this phase. During modeling, I refine my midtones and darks by using mixing white. I don't want these tones to go too bright. I also add my textures here. The key to realism is contrast. I need dark darks and light lights. My final step is detail phase. Here I can use small brushes and start using titanium white to bring in the highlights. If I have a plan and can execute well, it makes the creative process easier. Let's migrate to our next segment of the adventure, physical features and behavior. What are we looking for when identifying the cow nose ray? Since this is a ray, we know that it is vertically compressed. It has large pectoral fins that look like wings, eyes and gill openings on the dorsal surface of the body, small dorsal and pelvic fins, and a whip-like tail. This ray is light brown or to yellow brown on the dorsal surface and cream underneath. It doesn't have any unique markings to identify it. But it does have a distinct nose. This nose is squared off or double ridged with a groove down the center. There are a pair of small fins that can extend down from the sides of the nose to increase suction and movement of the sediment. On both sides of the broad head are the eyes and gill openings. Underneath the body is a small smiling mouth filled with dental plates. These are rows of flat teeth used in crushing prey, followed by gill vents where water is expelled. The pectoral fins start just behind the head and extend to a point. Then the wings concave towards the central line back near the pelvic fins. 
These fins are often mistaken for shark fins when they splash near the surface. Cownose rays grow between 24 and 28 inches across, but can be larger. Females are typically larger than males. Now, if you've been around for a while, do you remember how to determine the sex of a ray or shark? Look for claspers. Claspers are finger-like organs behind the pelvic fins of males. These are used in mating. The tail is round, thin, and long. Just behind the pelvic fins are a pair of serrated barbs for protection. Don't worry, these barbs are not large and the toxin coating them is the same strength as a bee sting. We measure the width across a ray instead of its length because of the variance in tail length. The tail can be two or three times the length from the head to the pelvic fins. Let's move to behaviors now. Kaunos rays love spending their time in schools. They like being around other animals. They will rub up against each other and cruise in the water column. Have you ever felt a ray? I love getting the opportunity to gently touch a ray. They are smooth as silk and feel like slippery leather. And I love it. Anytime I get to be hands-on with an animal is a fun day. I only recommend this in captivity though. The staff have ground or clipped the barb of the tail so that it is dull. But don't worry, it is like clipping our fingernails. It grows back slowly. Kaunos rays are ovoviviparous, meaning the females carry eggs in their body and then they hatch and give birth to live young. I couldn't find any parental behaviors after the young are born, but gestation lasts between 11 and 12 months. A fun behavior female rays have adopted is sticking their pectoral fins out of the water when they reject a potential mate. Males grab onto the tips of the fins with their mouth so that the female doesn't slip away. Remember, they don't have hands and they are slippery. So the female removes the ability for a male to grab the tip of her fins if she doesn't like him. Let's move to diet and how the Kaunos ray is doing. What do they eat? Before I tell you, let's think about this for a second. I already mentioned that these rays have dental plates instead of sharp teeth. What might this tell us about their primary prey? Well, dental plates are used for crushing food. So we can infer that their food have hard shells that need to be crushed before the nutrients come out. They feed on soft shelled clams, medium hard clams, oysters, some small fish and crustaceans. Most of their diet is soft clams and crustaceans. Looks like everything here besides the small fish has a hard ex exoskeleton. Were you able to guess correctly? How are the Kaunos rays doing? The IUCN red list has them listed as vulnerable. This study was done in 2019, so it is a recent study. Kaunos ray populations can be tracked and monitored via airplane and photography. They don't swim too deep and can be seen easily from the air. The limiting factor of their decline in population is overfishing depleted food sources and grass beds due to pollution and temperature shifts. Oysters and clams are hit hard with ocean acidification and pollution. This decreases the population of rays due to a lack of food. Some oyster farmers are trying to make it legal to collect these rays in limited hunts in order to protect their oyster beds. Sometimes a school of rays will swim by, grab a snack, and destroy a farmer's livelihood. This might work, but I think we should focus on the long term. Fix the pollution and clean our water system so that there is enough for everyone. The ray meat is hard to harvest and can be tainted by parasites causing illness in people if not prepared correctly. I think it should be our last option for us. 
Kaunos rays are also used in the aquarium trade. They look cool and are fun to have in touch tanks. It raises awareness and inspires people to love our sea creatures. Let's move to the last segment of our adventure. What was my personal experience with this cow nose ray and how is my painting coming along? I have moved on to my detail phase of my painting. I am using small brushes and I'm working on my highlights. This pulls a depth to my painting, it contrasts well with my darks. I use titanium white in my color mixing and, it is, and I use it sparingly for the brightest spots. There's a lot of detail in the surface of the water. I want it to look real and like it's moving. This means I need to work in sections, adding little details to each section. This helps me keep track of where I am and what my painting needs. Otherwise, it might be overwhelming to look at the whole painting at once. I make sure to use my reference photo often and stand back from my painting to distance myself from it for a bit. This helps to refresh my eyes and see details as a viewer and not up close as the artist. It lets me evaluate what my painting needs. It is a big game of spot the difference. So what was my encounter with the Kaunos Ray? I was in Scottsdale with my friend and we went to the Odyssey. There was this cool section filled with all types of rays and a food court. By this time, we had been looking at fish for hours. I had to touch the rays. I stuck my hand in the water and waited for a ray to swim up and rub against my hand. Now, I didn't have any food for this animal, but it eventually warmed up to me and my presence. I wanted my friend to touch them too, but she was a little nervous. That is fine. I'm not going to force anyone to touch a sea creature if they don't want to. So. When I was done playing with the rays, I went to the far end of the tank and got close to the floor. I knew this, I knew the picture that I had in mind. I wanted it to look sideways or up at the ray. The sun was streaming down through the windows and was making beautiful patterns in the sand. I wanted to capture the warm, bright, tropical feel. I wanted to share the saltwater pasture of the cow nose ray. There we have it. What do you think? Were you moved by it? I love how it turned out. I have an idea of how the painting's gonna turn out in my head, but then to see it finished is utterly amazing. This month I'm helping Hope Creek Charitable Foundation. It's the local food bank connected to my church. They help around 200 families per week, and a family is considered a group of four people. With everything that's going on, prices of everything are going crazy, I just wanted to help. I wanted to reach out into my community, my local area, help the people around me by donating time, resources, food, or money. If you would like to help as well, I will leave links down in the description. Portions of my sales from the previous month are applied to this month's charity, and so on. I sell the art that I create, and as well as merchandise, so I sell the originals, limited edition prints, and unlimited prints. My originals have glitter, glass bead gel medium, or pearlescence to play with light, and, and my limited editions have this as well. I use Feather and Fox Print Company on Whidbey Island as my main print source. They print wonderful G museum quality G clays for me. I love working with them. They're not a sponsor but I, they're a product and a company that I use. So by supporting this community, you're supporting charity. You're also supporting two local businesses. Thank you for watching. Spread love, curiosity, and creativity. I've been Brandon, and I will see you in our next adventure.